one quick question at the very beginning of this video today do you really think great men like chhatrapati shivaji maharaj or albert einstein would have been this great or would have been remembered as such precious people in the history had it not been the unimaginable and incredible way of their mother's upbringing i mean just imagine if this had not happened that is their mothers wouldn't have given this kind of contribution right from their childhood do you think there would ever be such great men in the history now i would like to start with uh, you know talking about jija mata the mother of chhatrapati shivaji maharaj you know she herself was a very intelligent administrator a very nice warrior and a horse rider herself and she single handedly brought up chhatrapati shivaji maharaj and she taught him all the values of being the perfect administrator of being a courageous warrior and she did all these things with a very clear thought in her mind that yes my son is going to be the greatest ruler ever that our indian history as has ever witnessed and she molded him and brought him up in a way that he would you know be that kind of great king who would restore the authenticity of our motherland and uh, when i read stories about jija mata and uh, chhatrapati shivaji maharaj believe me it is so inspirational as a mother myself and i feel that she was a great human being first of all and she instilled all the wonderful qualities in her son shivaji maharaj and she made sure that you know he learns things from the great epics like uh, ramayana mahabharata she made sure that he inculcates those precious values of you know all the great men that you can you know understand by reading those uh, scriptures or epics and uh, most important and according to me the most uh, you know the wonderful aspect of her upbringing was she also instilled the uh, necessity that you know he has to value women he has to uh, show the kind of respect women deserves so it was there in him right from childhood and there is an instance in his uh, life wherein he actually won a war he won a battle and there was this uh, one uh, beautiful lady who was taken as a uh, war prisoner and during those days uh, back in the history it was always like the one who was taken as a, a, you know a prisoner of a war that person would serve uh, maybe she would be a wife or she would be a slave but uh, you know what shivaji maharaj did he said please take her back with utmost respect had it been any other king maybe he would have married or whatever but he was so um, firm in his upbringing and that was because of jija mata she single handedly as a mother brought up a son whom we still remember for his valuable contributions towards our indian history so such was the way she brought up her son and there was also one more instance that i came across while i was uh, you know reading about jija mata and that was uh, there was a situation in his childhood when uh, shivaji maharaj was hesitating to get into a dark cave but jija mata said just go explore on your own and this is how she encouraged her son to overcome the fear of darkness right from his childhood and uh, nowadays we mothers i really don't think we have that kind of courage in ourselves first of all so that we can actually tell them to go ahead and explore you know just in order to overcome a particular fear or whatever
that was the kind of lady that she was and um, hats off to such women in our history now let me talk about albert einstein's childhood you know his mother pauline einstein she was a wonderful lady and one great instance in his life you know shows the greatness of this lady it happened so that uh, albert einstein when he was in his elementary school one fine day he came back home with a note uh, given by his teacher and since he was not able to read back in those days uh, he said he just handed it over the note to his mom and uh, his mom took the note and when she was reading it she, her eyes was full of tears and she just said uh, you know to her son she said that uh, in this it's written that you are a very intelligent boy you are way too intelligent for our school to cater to your needs of education and you are going to be something very wonderful and very valuable to this world and immediately after reading the note she uh, you know brought all the materials necessary to educate him all on her own at her place at her home and uh, we all can see the kind of education that she gave to her son that he became the most wonderful popular and uh, eminent scientist of the 20th century and yes of course it is because of albert einstein that our daily life has become much more easier and that's the kind of contribution he gave to this world and this was possible because of pauline einstein and after a few years when pauline einstein um, you know was no more in this world after her sad demise albert einstein actually opened that note he found that note and uh, when he read it he were, he literally burst into tears because in the note it was written that his teacher back then had written about him that he is a very dumb child and we cannot afford to educate him in our school and he will amount to nothing in this world these were the words of his teacher but then pauline einstein did not allow albert einstein to go through this humiliation instead she had this quick wisdom and this compassion for her son that and of course the trust and belief in her son that he is going to contribute so much more to this world and she actually molded his character and gave him the kind of you know the education that he became the greatest physicist of all times and uh, that is how we remember him in our history and as i said he burst into tears after he read this note and that was not because of the humiliation that he felt after reading the note but it was you know that moment when he felt that you know my mom gave me so much of compassion that i never realized that i was subject to any such kind of humiliation at the earlier uh, days of my childhood so these things are so inspirational and we have witnessed them it's not something like you know uh, stories or it's not a myth these great men existed in the history and uh, more than that such courageous and uh, valuable women mothers existed in the history and we should feel proud reading such stories and obviously draw motivation and inspiration from such great mothers that our history has witnessed so far so with these two stories it's very evident that a mother of course plays a prominent role in the upbringing of her kid and uh, as the title today it suggests that i would love to talk about the ways in which we as mothers as homemakers how can we emotionally support our kids because 
although we talk about the courage bravery and uh, the education that was given to these great men by these great mothers it also involves the kind of emotional support that these mothers extended on their sons and that is something so valuable and that is something that is so vital for us to learn and understand so yes in today's video i would love to talk about this topic and uh, hi i am vaishnavi and my channel is all about home making motivation and apart from showing how i can clean the house in a particular you know uh, the routine that i have maintained and also sharing all my organizational ideas when it comes to home i love to speak about the mental health of us homemakers and if you are interested in such kind of contents as a homemaker or otherwise because my you know the contents that i choose is also applicable generally so if you are interested in uh, knowing such contents and uh, you're new to this channel then please consider to subscribe to my channel so that you become a part of this beautiful community of homemakers and if you're already a part of this community then please welcome back and uh, yeah without any further ado let's start this video well i would never claim that i'm the best mother or i know it all and that's the reason i'm coming up with this content no i have had my own failures in fact i still have and uh, yeah i am no life coach and i'm not an expert to be talking about such topics but then yes i would love to share all the learnings all the experiences that i've had so far in my life as a mother and today's content it just you know it made me learn so many things on a personal level first and you know during the course of my content writing i i could realize so many things and uh, that's the reason why i'm so happy to share all the points that i could collate regarding this particular topic and uh, as i just said that you cannot find a perfect mother you know a mother is not like you know uh she is trained to be a mother no you you learn with experiences and we all are here to learn nobody is like claiming to be perfect mother or the super mom uh, we really cannot claim all such things we are learners in you know at every phase of life we are still learners and uh, when i say that we need to emotionally support our kids the first and foremost thing that we need to understand is we need to inculcate in them this particular important quality and that is the uh, quality of taking accountability for everything and when we do this right from the childhood it will you know uh, benefit them in ways that we cannot even imagine you know that will really shape their character that will you know that will help them to form their own self image which is so important for them to build their confidence in life so yes we need to inculcate this particular quality in them and that is the art of taking accountability for things now let's go back you know to their childhood like when they were babies back then uh you know when they were learning to walk obviously nobody is a superhero who just got up and started walking no babies walk they fall they again get up and we are there to help them so that they walk they they develop all their skills and they become physically fit so when they were at that phase and uh, you know by chance you know it happened like you know the baby fell by trying to walk and maybe got a little bit of hurt because of the table which we were not aware and maybe it was our uh, ignorance as well so at that point of time what do we do it's like instantaneously what we do is we start hitting the table or if he falls on the floor for that matter we start hitting on the floor we say why did you hurt my son what is this you know, we we show that ac action right in front of the baby we are like it's not your fault 
it's the fault of the table or it's the fault of the floor but it's not your fault you know instead of doing that and trying to create that uh, mentality in them right from that age that it's not your fault it's not your fault it's the fault of the table it's the fault of anything external to you nothing it's got nothing to do with you if we kind of build all such kind of mentality not that we want to build it intentionally but maybe unintentionally and out of ignorance if we do that it will not do any good to our own kids because they are going to grow up with that mentality itself so even if they commit any blunder or if they do any kind of mistake in the future that time they'll just look back towards the way they were brought up and they'll say oh my mom taught me why should i take accountability i will just you know pass the blame on the external situation on any other person for that matter and i can be you know uh kind of away from all these blames that kind of mentality is so dangerous just give it a thought because as long as the person will not take the accountability as long as a person will keep blaming others that particular person will never get a chance to do a thorough introspection that person will not have clarity of thoughts that kind of a person will not have a clear conscience and who did all this to him unknowingly out of ignorance who did this as mothers or maybe as elders parents whoever but yes majorly it's the mother who interacts a lot with the baby so i am emphasizing on our role as a mother even when the child is barely able to walk trying to learn how to walk so it's not just about walking it can be many other situations during the growing up years wherein we should not get blinded with the kind of kindness a mother oozes out for her child rather we should have the kind of vision that whatever i utter whatever i tell to my child it is going to go a long way and i need to be mindful about what i'm going to convey to my son or to my daughter you know that kind of consciousness should be there as a mother and all these things are very important because it will help our own kids right it's not that we are doing something else to someone else it's for our own kids so these are very small things we may just ignore it we may say that oh what a big deal nothing nothing but we don't know somehow we are building their character in a way that we ourselves will not like it later like for example something happens and you know for a fact that your son or your daughter has committed the mistake but they're not ready to take up the responsibility they're not ready to take up the kind of accountability they will just quickly you know they'll blame on something else no mamma this happened because you know because of this person or because this situation was like this mamma i did not i did not do anything you know it's it's possible will you ever like it or even if you ignore such things in your kids will that kind of attitude help your own kid no right because that kid will never understand that he has gone wrong or she has gone wrong and as long as they do not acknowledge their mistakes they will not be able to rectify it so although it seems very uh, small and you know a uh, very ig- ignore uh, you know kind of we kind of ignore such points although we feel that it's it's a very uh, small thing why do we have to emphasize on this but still it will impact their uh what you can say it will impact their uh, emotional and mental growth in a way that they start inculcating the qualities which we ourselves will not be able to encourage later so yes be very conscious be very conscious as a mother as to what kind of words you are uttering to them and uh, whatever you utter and whatever you do it will go a very long way in their life in terms of molding their character in terms of as i said they are building their self image they are at a phase where they are discovering themselves they are exploring themselves like what am i who am i and if we as mothers are uh, you know wise enough to be alert then 
that will be really really helpful for them and also uh, when i gave you the example of the stable and when you know uh, the kid gets hurt or whatever even at that point of time right in front of the kid even if we start saying that oh mamma did the wrong thing she should not have kept the table there mamma should really improve even if i have a conversation like that with my son who is able to understand my words even that will help him you know he'll practically see that oh mamma is taking accountability of her mistakes right so i need to be careful as to what i am teaching my son or my daughter and it should be conveyed in a way that they also inculcate those qualities in them and uh, the first and foremost as i just discussed till now and that is please inculcate the value of taking accountability for everything that they do because as long as they keep blaming others or blaming external situations believe me they'll never improve improve themselves they'll never you know put the kind of work on themselves they'll never have that kind of effort in order to be you know someone better than themselves they're like happy they are like giving excuses they like justifying their actions they're never taking the accountability would you want such kind of a kid no right so be careful about even the smallest things the smallest uh, way of communicating with especially the kids you know because it is uh, during those years that really their character gets molded so yes i would highly emphasize on this particular point and that is build that quality in them and that is they need to take the accountability of everything around them to explain this particular point uh, let me uh, you know narrate a small story in front of you so there is this uh, you know a boy called rahul and he is a wonderful child a very wonderful child and uh, he is going to his montessori he's at that age and every day he comes home and he tells mamma this happened mamma you know what my friend told like this my teacher told like this and he is so frank so honest he makes sure that he tells each and every detail of his time during you know that those particular hours that he spent in the montessori or maybe the play home so this is the kind of boy rahul is right and his mother is more than happy she is like oh is it oh wow wonderful tell me more about it she is such a happy mother but one day he does something not so good a little bit of naughty things that he'll do in the class and obviously he gets uh, maybe uh, you know the teacher will or the uh, anything like you know they are, he is being guided that please don't do that next time anything that he committed as a mistake in his class and uh, as usually he comes home and then he says mamma you know what today i did this but you know what his mom did his mom all of a sudden she flared up flashed out at him she said how could you do that i never taught you all these things this is so disgusting i am really upset with you this is not the way the moment she shows that kind of reaction towards rahul you know what happens rahul right from the next day itself he completely stops telling whatever happens in his school and this will continue for a long time even when he reaches his teenage and obviously the mother is understanding that my rahul is not the same he changed and he and and you know during that phase she starts uh, thinking that what is lacking in my upbringing why is my son not coming and telling me everything like he used to you know tell me before and she kind of blames his son also and she says oh i don't know what is wrong with him why is he hiding things from me how do i communicate with him communication has become such a big deal for me as a mother what do you understand by this story <laughs> well you know what happened while rahul was so honest 
right from his montessori days right from his play home days that one day that he committed a blunder or he committed a mistake and he was sincerely telling what happened with him his mother on that day did not use her wisdom she just reacted rather than responding and that changed the whole story that changed the entire equation between the mother and son what do we understand from this it's a simple thing you know what as a mother i'm not saying that uh, even if he commits a mistake be cool and just say that it's okay it's okay so what yeah you committed a mistake it's okay no i'm not suggesting anything like that that would be foolish that would be like you know taking the kid towards a very bad path no mother would do that and i would never suggest that but all i'm saying is when they're being so honest to us when they're coming every single day and saying mama this happened mama that happened and on the same level they are also confessing that mama i made a mistake you know what we should do we should have that wisdom we should not show up our emotions by shouting at them our intentions as a mother is perfect we would like to bring about the discipline we would like to show the strictness that look if you commit a mistake i am not here to pamper you fine i agree intentions are perfect but the way we react that will just push them away from what they truly are towards us and i don't think we need that right so the only solution is whenever they come to you and they honestly confess that something went wrong you know they took accountability of their mistakes at that point of time we need to actually calm down ourselves we need to sit and talk to them like our friends just because they are um, you know younger to us in age doesn't mean that we have complete authority on them they do have self respect they do have emotions right so we need to be having that kind of wisdom wherein we sit with them and with wonderful kind and empathetic words we need to make them understand that okay rahul i do understand that something like this happened but uh, do you think it was a good thing for you to you know actually listen to your mom saying that uh, don't do this next time in front of all the other kids that is in front of your own friends did it feel good to you you know all these things happened to you today so you need to have this kind of conversation with your son rather than lashing out at him or yelling at him as i said your intentions are good as a mother but did it help no right so we need to be very conscious and it's not just at the montessori level of course this kind of wisdom needs to be shown towards the kids when they are going to play home to the montessori or even before that even at home if something happens in the comment tell sincerely you know at that time also we need to have that kind of wisdom of course we need to have that kind of wisdom but then even when they reach their teenage or for that matter when they uh, you know whichever whatever phase they are in they must have the confidence that uh even if i go wrong even if i take a wrong decision and if i go and tell it to my parents my parents will not just you know explode and you know punish me they should have that kind of confidence that uh, first thing is that if you talk to them at that level itself mm-hmm. you know during the childhood itself i don't think any individual will go to uh, that level you know when they grow up and still they commit some mistakes usually that will not happen because their foundation is so strong that they will think twice and they'll be alert that no mistakes should not be done from my end because i am carrying two names after my name that is the name of my father and the name of my family they'll be very very clear in their thoughts they'll not take chances if right from the childhood we are you know being friendly with them and we are making them understand that it is so important to choose the right path and it is so important to you know value your morals your ethics but then humans 
we of course commit mistakes be it intentional or non intentional so even at that time if something wrong goes with that uh, particular kid uh, you know even that particular person in his teenage or later at least that child or that uh, you know your son or son or daughter of yours will have the confidence that yes i can rely on my parents i can confess and they will give me a solution rather than punishing me that is so important right for a kid or for anyone for that matter but if you just close those doors for them they will go to their friends and uh, it's not necessary that their friends will uh, give them good suggestions because even they are at the same level they may give them some foolish suggestion which you may not like and which your own kid may regret later right so it is better your kid comes to you with his problems or with her problems rather than going to friends or some external help so don't close the door for your own kids whenever they are facing situation whenever they are not able to take right decisions they are or maybe they have done something wrong which they are not happy about and they want to rectify it at least they should have the confidence to come to you for the solution and you should keep those doors open for them and that will happen only when we don't react when they are being truthful to us it is only possible when we as is will not uh you know push them away when they're being honest because there are so many kids you know what they do is they'll do whatever they want and they'll not even care to come and tell to their mom and dad and one fine day when they'll really fall into a bigger trouble that is when the parents will come to know it is very awkward and no parents will dream or no parents would ever want to face such situation so yes as parents as mother especially you know whenever your kid comes to you and is being honest although you are uh, you know the instinct of a mother is saying that oh discipline him discipline her don't try to be so soft on her or don't try to be so soft on him he'll anyway uh, take a wrong path if you remain soft during such situations although your motherly instincts are telling you that please be wise to respond rather than react make them understand what they are doing by that you are not closing the doors for them by that you are not pushing them away they will come to you they will discuss their problems and only when they discuss their problems only when they are being frank to you and sincere to you it is only then that you will be able to solve their problems and also uh, protect them from not going towards these problems again so communication is very important and that will happen when you keep the doors open for such communication by not lashing out on them by not punishing them but by showing empathy let them be at any stage of their life let them be at any age but they should have the confidence to come to you confess to you rather than going to friends or anybody you know away from the family or anybody who is who may not be related to us what if they seek refuge over there what if they feel it is safe to tell everything what if they feel that it is safe to confess over there because they are not going to scold me uh, they'll just listen to me and that will make my heart feel lighter and then i can go about doing the same thing that should never be the case we are we should not push our own kids in that kind of uh, you know uh, comfort or they should not take a path like that so yes this point is also i feel in my view it is very vital let us be wise in handling their emotions by handling our own emotions first of all properly and that is by not lashing out at them for everything and uh, yes empathy is the key show empathy and they'll always come back to you they'll always communicate with you properly how would you want your son or daughter to be someone who speaks truth someone who has very good habits someone who is so self disciplined and self motivated in life that you don't have to really 
constantly go behind him or her telling stuff or guiding them all the time right you want them to be self dependent you want them to be self reliant as i self as i just said self disciplined of course all this will happen when we bring these qualities in us as parents yeah i think this particular sentence may sound a little uh what you could say like oh why is she being so you know focused only on parents children have no duties or what but just think about it everything starts here right so if i want my son not to use the mobile first i should make sure that i don't use mobile too much in front of them it's you know like kids they will not learn from what i'll say kids will learn from what they see now when they see that oh mom is so work oriented mom is uh, so much you know uh, concerned about staying productive all the day you don't have to sit and give them a lecture only by seeing your own actions they will do wonders in their life because you are an inspiration for them you are their role model now so walk the talk rather than sitting and you know like kind of giving the kind of knowledge to them all the time it is better to walk the talk that is be what you are trying to tell them and only by seeing you they will do it let me quote one more example regarding this particular uh, topic you know sometimes what happens like uh, maybe uh, you you want to avoid somebody's call you don't want to take a person's call and that person calls on your mobile now if your if that call goes unanswered then obviously it won't be good at the same time you are avoiding that person so sometimes you know you may actually tell your own daughter or son just pick up the call tell that uh, mama has just gone for shopping and she's left her mobile so your son or your daughter very sincerely picks up and tells a lie right there and who taught you taught them to tell that lie and then later the child will think that oh this is a way to avoid stuff in life just tell lies and you are done you're teaching them with your own actions you're teaching them you're involving them in telling a lie which is so dangerous so they will learn they'll instantly learn oh mama did that na let me also do next time i want to avoid somebody i'll just tell lies escapism you are building a quality in your own kid which you would never want to witness and that is the quality of escapism if you can't face something tell lies if you can't do this just get away from that you would rather want your kid to be honest right and you would rather want to inculcate the qualities of uh, saying the truth all the time no matter what it may seem very silly or oh, what so it it was just a phone call so what's a big deal about she just told a lie for me she, or he just told a lie for me but it will have an impact on the kid's mind uh, it is like you are teaching them to tell lies which is not a good thing so we need to keep in mind that uh, whatever we do they are watching us they are learning from us and also one more thing you know um, <laughs> this is very hilarious okay uh, a kid is throwing tantrums fine a kid is not understanding he or she is being stubborn and throwing tantrums as i said and uh, maybe shouting also at home uh, so you don't encourage such kind of behavior right you will not encourage this behavior in your son or in your daughter your intention as a mother is pure as always you don't want your son or daughter to have anger issues in their life so when this particular kid of yours is shouting throwing tantrums you know what you do you also shout at the top of your voice and you say don't shout <laughs> happens right at least i have done personally i have done i warn my son to cool down 
not through tantrums but what am i doing what am i teaching him by shouting i am just telling him that i am the one who doesn't tolerate i am the one who shouts cannot regulate my emotions and with that shouting i am telling him not to shout how fair is it and how will he understand how to react rather if i maintain my cool and calmly tell him this is not the way to control your emotions don't uh, you know display your emotions in a way that later you will cut a sorry figure in front of us so i need to have that kind of calmness within me so that i go and guide my child rather than me going and shouting at that child of mine and what will the child learn from it he will say that okay she also shouts then why not me i'll also shout or for that matter maybe it is not involved uh, you know it, it is something that where your child is not involved and you are dealing with a situation where you're not showing your emotional stability and you are like screaming at the top of your voice because you've lost your temper you've lost your cool your kid right there sitting is noticing you your kid is observing how my mama is handling the situation and you know like maybe after shouting and venting out your frustration and yelling and then you go to your kid and you say i'm sorry okay i'm sorry you had to witness that but i i, I lost my cool that person did like that the situation was like that how do you expect me to stay cool if i go and justify all these things right in front of my son my son will not get convinced because what he saw will be registered in his mind what he saw before i gave him the justification and the explanation that will remain in his mind oh this is the way mamma deals with situations i am teaching him indirectly i am teaching him that it's okay to shout i am teaching him that it's okay if you are angry lash out at people if you are not getting things done at home lash out at people it's okay this is how mamma does you also do that he will learn no matter how much i go and give him the explanation and justification he will not get convinced he might show empathy he may say yes mamma it happens but what remains in his mind is what he saw practically i'm teaching him bad by not regulating my own emotions so yes as a parent as a mother it becomes very important how i display my emotions in front of my kids and that is where i need to practically teach them how we need to regulate our emotions how we can face situations challenges in our lives because kids will learn more by seeing not when you sit and give them a lecture they will not register anything in their mind if you just go on giving them lecture you set an example for them you become the role model so a lot you know a lot of effort goes into being a mother it's not just that um uh, that title that yes i became a mother no a lot of efforts go into it and uh, believe me these things are so small yet so simple to be followed so it's not like you know oh what a task to be a mother no if we follow such simple steps we are setting a good example to our own kids it's as simple as that nothing complex about it all we need to be uh, aware of is that we need to have that uh, uh, presence of mind to you know acknowledge the fact that my son is looking at me my daughter is looking at me my reactions are registered in their minds so i need to behave i need to deal with situations in a way that will help them to draw that kind of uh, inspiration from me hey mamma handled it so calmly although that person was irritating her although she was going through a challenging situation she did not lose her cool you know if this kind of uh, things are registered in their minds it is so impactful right so even when they face any such situation in their lives 
will always get back to this particular moment that they witnessed regarding their own mother that oh wow she was so cool i can do it too so we become a role model to them so always let's let's all just remember that these are the very um, small things which we ignore but if we are conscious about all these things believe me it will help our kids in the long run and uh, yeah this is also a very vital point that we need to keep in our mind and that is to walk the talk to be what we want them to be we need to be that first and looking at us will automatically be what we really want or what we really expect them to be as adults as simple as that it was a wonderful journey for me right from the time i started con- doing the content writing for this topic until i actually uh, documented it and recorded it as a content on my channel it was a learning experience for me as a mother because i realized so many things when i collated these thoughts when i really thought about it like how exactly are we supporting our kids emotionally and i felt so special as a mother that yes there are so many things we can do we can create magic in them we can create such lovely wonderful magical individuals and uh, we can you know actually mold wonderful citizens for our country it's all in our hands all in our hands believe me as a mother we have that capacity and always remember that a particular society or a country uh, you know its progress or its welfare is always determined by the way a lady is treated and also by the way a lady you know treats her own self and the way she brings up her kids because what is society society is made up of individuals these individuals if they are well groomed by mothers like us then do you think any society will lag behind or any society will mm, not be uh, ideal so it's i think it's 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 our capacity to mold the society and the country itself by producing by molding by creating such wonderful and magical individuals who will take our society and country ahead it 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 surely lies in our hands as mothers imagine the power you have got and celebrate your motherhood and these were the points that i could collate and these were the points that i really felt and i really you know i i felt it is so convincing and so logical that as mothers although they seem such small points but if we do it with the kind of dedication then we will help our kids we will help them in becoming the you know the ideal individuals that we always have you know in our mind for them so yeah these are the points that i really felt is necessary to be shared once i got them in my thought and uh, i'm so happy i shared it if you like today's content then please make sure that you leave comments in the comment section and that would be a feedback for me and obviously it's going to be precious for me so until next time please take care of yourselves and uh, always remember that you are special because you're a mother and you're magical because you have the powers and yes celebrate your motherhood every single day and understand how powerful you are it's all about it happy home making always and uh, take care of yourselves and thank you for watching today's video thanks a lot